So if you're just getting started, there's a really great document on the Helium dev docs that's going to walk us through every step that we need to set this up. Uh, this is going to set up a validator in the Helium testnet. Uh, some stuff might change uh, going into mainnet, but this is how things are working today. So the first thing we're going to need as we're getting started is a Helium wallet for the testnet. Uh, and to do that, we're going to use the Helium wallet CLI. Uh, and I've got that up over here. Uh, we'll start in this repository, and then I'm going to jump straight into the releases. It's going to save us a lot of steps with compiling. Uh, and I'm going to grab this link here. Uh, and I'm going to do this in a little bit of a funny way. I'm just going to pull this straight into my main directory. So I'm already at terminal. I'm in my home directory. I'm going to pull this down. And that will just take a second. Now I've got it. And now um, if I list out again, I can see that that's right here. Uh, I'm going to unzip or untar this. So tar, uh, uh, what is it, XF and Helium Wallet. Uh, just tab the complete there. Cool. So now I've got a new folder. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, move the Helium Wallet file here, and I'm going to just dump that right in this main directory. So that'll be a move, and it's going to be Helium Wallet and Helium Wallet, and then we're just going to stick it right back here. Cool. So now we've got this uh, in our main home directory. Now that that's in there, I can actually go ahead and remove these other two files. Cool. So now we're all cleaned up. I've got this right here. Uh, now, one thing that's going to save us a little bit of time down the road would be to add this to our bash profile as an alias. Uh, not so super necessary to just get started, so I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, we can execute this file by hitting dot slash and typing helium wallet. Uh, you may get an error from Mac OS in this step. Uh, if that does occur, you can open up your system preferences. Uh, go to security and privacy, and then unlock. And the Helium wallet will be listed down here, and you'll be able to enable that file. We have our Helium wallet now. Uh, what we're going to need to do now that we have it is to create a testnet wallet. Uh, so this isn't going to do it for us. Um, and just following along, it does outline that for us here. Uh, so we could go ahead and type dot slash helium wallet, and we will create basic. And then the important part here is the network testnet. It's going to ask us for a password. We can enter any password we want. I'm just going to say password for now. And there we go. Uh, our wallet has been created. We can see our address here. Um, and if I list out my directory again, we'll see that this wallet key file has also been created. So I can go ahead and say uh, Helium Wallet again, and um, just type info, because we're in this directory with the wallet, it'll look straight for it. And we can see all the info about this wallet. So we can see it has no balance, um, but most importantly, we get this address. Now what we can use this address for is to jump into the faucet. And we'll go ahead and paste that in here. We're going to submit a request. Sometimes this takes a couple times. There we go. We got one. And now that'll just take a minute. And then we can hop over here, run wallet info again. And as soon as that clears, we're going to see uh, some balance. While that's waiting, uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into AWS uh, and set up a server to run my validator on. So you can run your validator on any platform. Uh, I've been using AWS for a lot of my testing, but uh, Google Cloud, uh, IBM Cloud, AliExpress Cloud, like any of those, they're going to do the job for you. And there's actually an, uh, a benefit for us uh, running the network that these uh, services are distributed so we're not too centralized on any one provider. So we're in Amazon Web Services. Uh, notably, I'm in their EC2 platform, which is their Elastic Compute Cloud. Um, I'm going to jump into Instances. I'm going to click Launch Instances, and I want an Ubuntu uh, 20.4 instance, and I'm going to do this on a, a x86 um, AMD64 architecture. Uh, this will also run on ARM, but uh, Docker is a little bit tricky there.
I'm going to go ahead and run this on a T2 large. So we're looking for two uh, CPUs, a minimum of eight gigabytes of memory, and a decent allotment of bandwidth. Uh, we're going to go to our configuration details. Uh, so this looks good. I just need one instance. I'm not particularly about the subnet that I'm on. I'm going to add some storage. Uh, again, in production, we're going to need um, a lot more storage than 8 gigabytes. I think the recommendation right now is 120 gigabytes. Uh, but just for the sake of getting things running, I'm going to set this up with 8, uh, and we can always crank that up later. I have no tags to add. I am going to set up a security group here, so I'm just going to call this the Helium Testnet. Uh, in order for our validator to talk to the internet, we need to open the port 2154. Uh, and that is available here in our Helium dev docs. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that in here. Open to everybody. And review and launch. Ask us to create a new key pair. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just create a new one here. I'm going to call this my testnet validator. And we're going to need to download this key pair. Make sure you save this in a spot where you can access it easily. Uh, this is going to be your primary way to access your validator on AWS. This is a good time to get used to this in the testnet. Don't want to lose this in the future. And we can go ahead and click launch instances now that we have that available. All right, instances running. Let's go ahead and pop over there. Now's a good time to check to see if our wallet has any funds in it. So I'm going to go ahead and just run that Helium wallet info command again. And perfect, we can see there's 10,005 testnet tokens in there. And that's going to allow us to uh, stake our validator and pay for any fees that might be associated with that transaction. Let's go ahead and click into our instance here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and spin up a new terminal window. Before we can connect to our server, we're going to need to change permissions on that key file that we downloaded. So I'm going to do that first, and that's going to be permission 400, and it's going to be in that directory that I downloaded to. So in my case, downloads. Let's go ahead and return. Great. That key is set up now. All right, so now that we've set up our key, uh, we can go ahead and connect to our server. So we'll do that by SSHing in, SSH minus I, and we're going to route to that key. And our user here is going to be Ubuntu. And I can take this IP address at just like that, return, and there we go, we're in. And I can go ahead and run an update. And we're going to go ahead and run an upgrade on everything here just before we kick things off. Say yes to that. So now we've got clean slate server. Everything's getting up to date. Uh, next up is going to be to load Docker, uh, which is going to be the easiest way for us to get this running. sudo apt install .io. And just in case, oh, say yes. Uh, just in case you're wondering, all of this is documented in here. So we're at this spot. I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And we're going to be sure to replace this user here with Ubuntu in our case, which is the user for this account. Now that that's done, uh, we're going to need to kill and restart this. Uh, so I'm going to hit Command D and then just press up once. It's going to bring back my last command, hit return, and we're back in. Let's go ahead and double check all this too. We are running an AMD 64 system, so I'm just going to copy this, paste that in there. We can see we have AVX and AVX2, so we need to confirm that that's working just to make sure everything runs well. I'm going to go ahead and make a directory. Cool. Let's see, we have a directory there now. So we can go ahead and just take this install script. Um, there's a great breakdown of what these various flags are doing for us. So we can see our ports reflected there. Go ahead and paste that in, hit return. It's going to download that bundle. There we go. All right, so now uh, we should be able to query Docker. So this is going to be uh, we can go ahead and see that our Docker instance is running. Our new validator is called Computer Mule. We can reuse that command and type peer adder. And that's going to go ahead and give us the address of this P2P user. 
So now we can go ahead and stake our testnet tokens to this peer address, which is our validator. So we're gonna go ahead and flip back to our wallet here. We've already got our testnet tokens. I'm gonna go ahead and say, Mealing Wallet validators stake the address without the P2P in there. We're gonna do an amount and we're gonna hit return and it's not gonna go yet. Uh, remember our password here was password. Cool, so we get a preview of what this is gonna look like. There's no commit flag, so it's not gonna actually push this up. Uh, we can sort of review everything, this looks good. We're gonna go ahead and say commit, password again. And that is applied. We can go ahead and flip over now to the testnet explorer. So that's gonna be explorer.helium slash WTF and then uh, validators. So we're looking for computer mule. Uh, this will just take a few minutes and then we'll see this come through. So let's just wait a sec. And there we go. We can see that computer mule has been staked. Uh, it's currently noted as offline uh, and we can inspect that a little bit. And we see that we don't have any peers. So one thing that we can do to force some peers is to query the API and get some addresses of peers that will see this server. So this is all of the validators that are currently in consensus. And I'm just gonna go in here and grab one of these peer addresses. And this will help seed our peer table. Cool, so we can see we've successfully connected to a peer. Let's go ahead and run that peer book command again. We can see we have one friend uh, we're still not publishing, so I'm just going to try a couple more here. And now let's go ahead and take a look at our peer table again. Great. So we've sort of announced ourselves to the network. We can see that we're publishing on this address, but we're connected to three. We have this listen address. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Explorer again. And we're still not updated, but it'll get there really soon. That essentially covers everything you need to know about running it validator on the Helium testnet. There's some more extended things that'll help you along the way, and I'll link those below. Notably, there's some great scripts for auto-updating and running these things in just a few commands. Uh, there's also this validator registry, which is a great way to let other community members know what validator you're running in case they need to reach out with questions about your configuration or just to help you get an upgrade going. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to jump into the Helium Discord channel. There's a lot of helpful pins, and a lot of members are very willing to give you advice or help along the way. Thanks. That's all for now. If you have any questions, post them in the comments, reach out to me on Discord. I'm at Joey, and I will see you in the next rundown. Thanks.